Opening ceremony 47 hours from its spectacular beginning. But Melbourne is about to say good day and welcome the games of the 27th Olympiad to Australia. Reliving some of the nation's proudest sporting memories, the first competition of 2000 has descended on the grand old MCG. Fittingly, with the whole world watching, it is the marquee match of the world game. The combatants are ready. Let the football begin. Good evening Australia and welcome to the Olympic Games. Well, the countdown is finally over. The host nation is straight into battle, challenging the might of Italy. A country that has played more Olympic football than any other. In fact, you have to go way back to 1956 to find scenes like this. A capacity 98,000 crowd packed into the MCG. Of course, in 19 days time, we'll have a host of new achievements to be proud of. But right now, all the Aussies are worried about is their first round opponent. The 1936 gold medalist has never sent such a talented and committed squad to the Olympics. Italy heads Group A, the toughest of the four, with defending Olympic champion Nigeria making Australia's chances of qualifying particularly tough. 16 teams make up the largest team sport at the Olympics, and that's why, just like Atlanta four years ago, the football begins before the opening ceremony. Melbourne, Brisbane, Canberra, Adelaide and in fact the Sydney Football Stadium will all host matches before the gold medal decider on September 30 here at Homebush. The Aussie girls are in action today too in Canberra at the Bruce Stadium. The Matildas kicking off their Olympic football campaign. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of their preliminary round clash against Germany. Biegermann. Prince. Egerman looking for a 1-2, and a desperate save, here it is! First goal for the Germans, Inka Grinks. Grinks was the lone scorer in the 45th minute of the second half, and Prince looking dangerous now. Prince taking on Salisbury, and here goes Grinks. Trouble, it's a second goal! Renata Lingor now. Oh, good shot, and it's in! A goalkeeping mistake there by Tracy Wheeler. And that certainly is the icing for the German team. It certainly was the icing on the cake. Germany picking up three points for the win. Griggs scoring at the 35th minute. Weyman in the 70th. And Lingor just on full time. Germany successful 3-0. Shortly though, it's back to the MCG. And it's Australia versus Italy. Get your hands on an awesome Neotone Game Boy Color. What's your color? For the holidays, I went to the beach. For the holidays, we went to the colored sands. On the holidays, my dad took me out to Nice Farm. For the holidays, I went to Sovereign Hill. At Sovereign Hill, you can enter the draw to win a $5,000 solid gold nugget. And every day of the holidays, you can find a $100 nugget in the diggings. So rush to Sovereign Hill. In Target's Dollar Days catalogue, a dollar goes a long way. Like CDs for only $20 and nappies for only $18. So look out for your Dollar Days catalogue out now and cash in at Target. Moments ago, a special moment in sport with the national anthem and a very proud Australian team. Well, the MCG hasn't always been a happy hunting ground for Australia. Just three years ago, a draw against Iran robbed Australia of a World Cup spot. Perfect conditions in Melbourne tonight, a temperature of around 18 degrees to see how they fare against Italy. Let's now take you to the MCG and our commentators are Paul Wade and Paul Williams. Well, around 97,000 fans have come to see if the precocious and talented Oli Roos can match the footballing aristocrats and the European champions, Italy. We are just a few moments away from kickoff now. Italy, along with Brazil, the gold medal favourites for football. Australia at longer odds, but boosted by history, which shows that host nations often produce extraordinary results. 
Well, arguably the biggest game of football ever seen in this country has just kicked off. A hundred years of Olympic football celebrated at the 2000 Games. The hosts Australia, an emerging nation knocking loudly on the door of the top tier of the world game, taking on one of the giants of the sport, Italy, with a pedigree a mile long. It is absolutely perfect. And it's an Italian throw-in. Baronio with the long hair in the centre of midfield for Italy, one of the most talented players in recent times. Well, you we can imagine the nerves of not just the Australian players, of course, but all of these stars, whether you're a superstar of the world game or not. Every match is always the same. The heart is beating extra loudly, and one man who knows an awful lot about that is the man sitting next to me, Paul Wade, 1988. You were in the Olympics, Wadey. I'm sure you can cast your mind back and you know how the players are feeling. Well, yeah, I know how the Italians were feeling in that particular tournament too. They were involved in one of the biggest upsets in Olympic Games football history when they were beaten 4-0 by Zambia. Uh, before that, uh, they were beaten 1-0 by Costa Rica in 84. So they do have history on their side, even if it be negative. And I'm just hoping that tonight just might be another one. Lazaridis forced to do some defending for the Oli Roos. One of three over 23 or over aged players in this Australian team. Well, the ball's going to be put out straight away there by Josip Skoko because Lazaridis has gone down and it's not a good start for Australia whose build-up has been severely hampered by injuries both for players before they arrived home take part in the games and since they arrived home as well and Lazaridis one of the most crucial players in the Australian team is slowly getting back to his feet well interesting to note the referee who is from Jamaica his name is Peter Prendergast he didn't even notice the foul there by the Italians the ball has been returned there's a little handshake between Lazaridis and the man who chopped him down Gattuso Lazaridis again. Mark Baduka leading the attack for the Oli Roos tonight, the big number nine. Fox, who's pretty calm on the ball. Just look at that for confidence in the early stages. That's brilliant play by Fox. Lazaridis under some pressure, though. The ball touched back to Milosevic in goal. Well, that's a real confidence from Hayden Fox. What a boost for his teammates. Here's another one. Baduka on the gallop down the left waiting for some support he turns well a promising moment and we remember the game for the Socceroos against Iran here at the MCG three years ago now and Australia started so strongly in that match and that's the first positive move forward from them in this one and here they come again and that's a great idea Viduka moving into space behind the Italian defence but staying on side And touched on. Plenty of blue shirts at the back and plenty of pressure coming from Australia. They come forward again. This time losing out. And Rossini for Italy. Two players in attack for the Italians tonight is Comandini and Nicola Ventola. It's a loose pass side is Baronio, Pirlo loses out, Lazaridis in space down the left, this is how he's made his reputation, he's still going into the area and that is a corner for Australia and the MCG goes up as Lazaridis moved down the left. Every time Mark Viduka gets the ball, every time Stan Lazaridis, I tell you the uh, the noise is deafening when those two players get it because they love to run at the opposition and that's what this big crowd want to see. An Australian corner aimed towards the back post. A touch there by the redhead of Fox, which stands out so much. And the number eight for Italy is Roberto Baronio. He's a great talent. 
he and Andrea Pirlo, the number 10, regarded as two of the great future stars of Italian football. Most of this Italian side are 23 years of age already, so they're at the maximum age for the tournament. No overage players for the Italian side. Here's Viduca, Australia's overage player, and laid back. Viduca going through! He couldn't get there, and it's a foul against Mark Viduca. But what a great build-up to that move. And Viduca really, who's the elder statesman, if you like, if you can be such a senior figure at the age of 24, but he is the senior man. Well, there was no foul there by Viduca. Not at all. It was uh, it's interesting at the press conference, Grandoni, who was the man probably given the job today of marking Mark Viduca, said he hadn't seen him play. Well, I tell you what, maybe he should have seen him play because so far he's backed off Mark Viduca every time he's got the ball. Oh, Lazaridis, so positive. Look at this. Brilliant play. Can he get a quality cross in? Well, it was well stopped at the near post, but two Italians left in the wake of Stan Lazaridis. There was some concern about that the Lazaridis was in form coming into this particular tournament he hasn't had the best of times at his club Birmingham City but he just lifts himself when he pulls on the Australian jersey well, to give you an idea of just how serious the Italians are about being successful at this Olympics the Italian first division Serie A has been postponed for two weeks just so that the clubs in that competition could willingly put forward their players for this particular side. And there are some big clubs involved here. 10 of the squad of 18 of the Italians play for either Inter Milan, Milan, Lazio or Juventus, the big four of Italian football. It's unheard of to delay the start of the competition. Weirman just slips over. Skoko. Now Grella involved. Australia very quick to close down. Lazaridis down the line. Looking for Viduca who just hesitated a second there. Grandoni. The Italian captain. Didn't quite judge the ball. Fox judges that when he's given it straight to Pirlo. Danger here for Australia. As Ventola goes into the area. was magnificent work at the back by Emerton the captain he's got a lot of ground to cover playing on the right hand side of a five men midfield tonight Brett Emerton Mark Viduca and Michael Kasija leading the attack and midfield of Vince Grella in the holding role Casey Weirman and Josip Skoko with permission to go forward at every opportunity It's going to be a tremendous battle out wide, isn't it? Zambrotta versus Brett Emerton. Brett wants to get himself forward. You give these midfielders, the Italian midfielders, some space. They'll ping one 50 yards over the top and uh, and get Zambrotta away down that left-hand side. So it really is going to be who has got the ability to get hold of that ball in the middle of the park to see who, whether Brett Emerton can get forward or not. Another slip from Weirman, that's the second or third we've seen from him so far in the match. And certainly Raul Blanco has embraced the responsibility of the host nation by naming an attack-minded 11. Really a great honour for the men's football team given the privilege of kick-starting the Australian Olympic team's campaign for medals. The women, the Matildas, going down earlier on in the evening in Canberra to the German team. A disappointing start for them. And the men make up for that. No complaints from the Italian bench about that challenge. But Viduca moving forward. Skoko helping it on. Someone surging down that right hand side. The women now closing in, and the pressure coming on the goalkeeper, Abayati. composed on the ball and just shunted off the ball there. 
by Everton. Brett Everton, who's been the captain of this Olympic team now for around four years. He committed himself to the Olympic Games. He knocked back many offers to go overseas and join big clubs. And he only just recently, a couple of months ago, joined the Dutch Giants final as Raul Blanco, the Australian coach, off the bench. Making a few comments. Set pieces worked on yesterday as we watched the Italians in training. See if practice makes perfect. Well, there's another corner. Italy, plenty of blue shirts in the centre. Milosevic struggling, and at the back post, it looks like it was Colosimo. Well, Comandini is no slouch in the air. He'll hang at the back post as Andrea Pirlo. Takes all the set pieces. Look at the curl on that ball, and Colosimo watching it closely. Pirlo now switches to the other side. Made his debut, 16 years of age. And Serie A. So it shows you what a talent he is. He's only 21 now. Little ball over the top. Milosevic hesitates. He's onside. The flag's gone up. The ball's gone out. Number 11 for Italy is Gianluca Zambrotta, regarded as the star player in the team. Very much a seasoned international with the full Italian team, though he was suspended for the Euro 2000 final in which Italy were beaten by France by two goals to one after being sent off in the semi-final. See Jeff just letting the ball run underneath his foot. Fox back to space back to Fox that's nice play Fox not taking any chances we've got to do some sorting out at the back the Australians we've got Hayden Fox Colosimo and Steve Labert there and at times when the likes of Pirlo push forward they're marking three on three very dangerous when you're taking the Italians on man for man at the back they need Hayden Fox to be free more often than not just for cover Limited brings down Zambrotta. More danger for Australia from the set piece. For a foul by the Australian captain. Crowd here at the MCG just a little bit subdued at the moment. A little bit nervous still with Italy on the attack here. Plenty of fans for both nations on show. That's curled in. Milosevic, good punch. Had to be as well. Great free kick by Pirlo. And Abiati well off his goal line here. And Milosevic will be pleased with his work so far tonight. And there's a bit of holding in the midfield there, right in front of the referee. We'll take another look here. Great punch by Milosevic. And all that work we did at training yesterday watching all those set pieces has gone right out the window because they didn't practice one of those whether it be a corner or a free kick they obviously knew we were sitting in the stands watching them uh, look at Maduka hold the ball up and just get past his man Maduka one of five Melbourne boys named in this Australian team it's a great feature of Victorian sports is just how parochial they are so extra special reason for the local crowd here to get behind this team Maduka whipped it across just too far he did well to turn his man he is proving to be a real handful for these def defenders he's yet to score this season Mark Maduka in his seven games so far for his new English Premier League club Leeds United Skoko has been on the score sheet though he's offside it won't count gee that was close Let's give some credit to Abiati, nonetheless, for the save, because he was playing as though he was on well. You he can looked, just looked on side to me. He did. Cirillo, the guy, the number 15 for Italy, in the middle of the defence there, 
put his hands to his face in total relief. You could see him looking for the linesman. He was only just offside. I wouldn't be surprised there if it was procedure that was flagged offside and the uh, referee followed the flag of the assistant referee on the far side. So a let off for Italy there. If there's any doubt at all in the referee's mind, remember, he must give the advantage to the attacking team. The attacking team right now is Italy with Comandini. Australian boot to the ball. Boronio. Here's Ambrosini. Oh, that's great defending. Brilliant work by Colosimo. Australia coming away. Here's Skoko. Well, it's a little bit hopeful. Viduca, a willing chaser. And it's not absolutely vital that Australia win tonight. The priority, of course, is to just qualify from the group of four, from which the top two teams will go through. Nigeria and Honduras make up the four. Oh, the Duke is making it look easy. It's a great ball. Everton running up the defence. That's the instructions from Raul Blanco. Still Everton. Good cross to the back post. No one there. a foul against Skoko. He's been a brilliant four for his Belgian club, Josip Skoko. He was delighted to get a late call-up after the unfortunate foot injury to the Socceroo captain, Paul Ocon. in the air, Casilla just couldn't get to the ball there. And Rossini, all the way back to Zanki, the sweeper. Veronio, the ball over the top was a nice one to Grandoni. Pirlo, tracked all the way by Grella, who's got a tough job on his hands tonight to keep up with the mobility of Andrea Pirlo. I think Raul Blanco will be asking a few questions of the two midfielders, Casey Werman and Vince Grella. So far, those two players in the middle of the park have gone down more times than I'm sure Raul would like to see them. And it's that twisting and turning. It is a soft ground. I just wonder whether they've decided to wear the rubber sole boots rather than the studs. That could be crucial. They need to keep their feet. They need to keep possession, especially in the middle of the park. Fox. That's a nice switch of play to Emerton, who's coming inside now. Running again at defenders. Lazaridis is in space on the left. Well, he might stretch the legs out again, Lazaridis. It's an early ball from him. They're just varying the game. Tardelli's up on his feet now. The Italian coach, the man with the beard, the right-hand side of his screen there. And the great Italian star he is now. Is Australia star Viduca laying it off to free man on the left. It was Lazaridis. Well, Viduca very much looking the part so far for Australia. I feel that if he does get an opportunity, he will put it away. I think that's one thing that has improved about Mark Viduca is the aggression that the Australians need to continue showing and that was a bad foul in the end but they can't back away from these Italians they've got to keep putting the pressure on oh taken off the head of the of the hands rather of the goalkeeper and Comandini was just waiting in behind he almost had an open goal to aim for there but it was just out of his reach Milosevic he was yelling at his defender there Steve Labert Foul. Little hand in the face there of Colosimo as we take a look here. Milosevic came out for the ball and lay, but just took it away from him. And fortunately for Australia, it was over the head of Nicola Ventola. Now, Lazaridis. Well, it's nice play. And quickly was Ambrosini.
Alessandro Grandoni. Well, we've never seen Mark Viduca play before this match, Paul. We've only had 20 <laughs> minutes gone. I think he knows an awful lot about him now. I was totally astounded by that comment. Again, I don't know whether he was winding up the gallery who'd gathered for the press conference, uh, but he, he certainly didn't know too much about Mark Viduca. With 70 minutes to go, he certainly will have some idea on uh, why Leeds United paid $17 million for him. Well, the danger for Australia is the movement of the ball of Comandini and Ventola in attack. They are a very mobile front two. They play up alone, a long way away from the midfielders. Long balls hit to them. They're moving around like crazy. And it was Labour there who just clattered into the Ventola. I can't see anything wrong with this, to tell you the truth, Paul. I mean, he's got his arms out. He's balanced. There's no swinging elbow. It's just a uh, man-to-man -man competition, very physical. A lot of the countries that come here are quite surprised by how physical, and I don't mean bad tackles, I just mean how physical the Australians can get, how quickly they move the ball with their feet. The Italians doing the Australians no favour by kicking the ball away either. Well, let's remember, this Italian side are the champions of Europe, which aside from Brazil, effectively makes them in the top two teams in the world. So for Australia to be playing as well as they are against such a high calibre opponent is a fantastic start. Viduca looking to make it even better. Lazaridis, two or three waiting in the centre. Well, that would be an Italian throw a moment. Lost there for the Oli Roos. take over well, he's lost out in a dangerous position look at this five Italian players in forward positions but uh, it was a good tackle by Vince Grella there it was a ball that he had to win even if he did give away a foul I suppose it's not such a bad situation with Fox caught out of position well nothing wrong really again was it well, now this is a dangerous situation for Australia because Andrea Pirlo, the number 10 for Italy, can score from there. He is a brilliant free-kick specialist. And wisely, every Australian player is back behind the ball, including one on the goal line, I know. Mandini, the number 7, just in space. He's moving forward now. As we'll just see in a moment. Pirlo over the ball, An Australian player on the goal line, now it's a good shot and off the goal line. Well, Colosimo saving Australia there. And that was a great bit of tactics by the Oli Roos because that saved a certain goal. As soon as that free kick was put down, they knew exactly where the ball was. Simon Colosimo went back onto the goal line. We've seen it so many times at, at this level. You just cannot afford to leave the goalkeeper one-on-one. -on -one. It's eight yards by eight feet, and players like Pirlo will take full advantage of it. Oh, that was marvellous play. Danger for Australia here. Well, they escaped on that occasion because of numbers in defence, and Fox completes the clearance, but Italy starting to warm to the task here. That's an easier one for Milosevic. Well, this was a fine bit of play. Look at the skill here. Brilliant work by Zambrotta, pulling it back. Fox missed it. Ventilla in the centre. And Labert clearing the ball for the Oli Roos. Well, in the final of the European Championships, Andrea Pirlo scored a winning goal, which was identical to that free kick, except that time it went in the top left-hand corner. There's no player on the goal line for the Czech Republic who were beaten, who are also here in this Olympic Games. Just 
just on 25 minutes gone here at the MCG. Australia nil, Italy nil. Pirlo coming extremely deep. That's too far. That will be a goal kick. Stan Lazaridis was too young for the 1992 Olympics and too old for the 1996 Olympics. So the 28-year-old, it's a real bonus for him to play at an Olympic Games for his country. Australian players going for the same ball there. Done by Labour. Time for him to go forward. Skoko. And he's fouled. Well, there's not a lot of room to operate in the midfield. And there's the first yellow card of the game. And it's the Italian captain, Randoni. Now that'll make life interesting for the next one hour as he tries to grapple with Mark Viduka and Mark loves to keep the ball to his feet so the odd challenge that might go in from that man there Grandoni could be a second yellow until he makes him just that little bit more hesitant and that might be all that Viduka needs to find that meter of space to find a goal it's not a great free kick Labour Free on that side, he's very good with the ball at his feet, Steve Labour, for a central defender. The flag's up. He's an Australian player, I think it was Mark Viduka offside in the centre. Well, Ambrosini just talking to the referee about a stray elbow. And you can see there, Viduka was about a metre offside. Rossini, Pirlo, Zambrotta. It's an interesting comment about Zambrotta in the press during the week. He's regarded on the transfer market, uh, valued around about 35 to 40 million dollars. The journalist noted that it was the equivalent of the salary cap of seven AFL clubs. That's just one player in the Italian team's value. Few others that are pretty handy as well in that squad. I happened to be talking to somebody the other day about the cost of this team and being worth $340 million. And Lindsay Gaze blew me out of the water by saying the basketball team, the dream team, the US, are worth $2.5 billion. So I closed my mouth and didn't say another word. <laughs> Slightly different transfer system between the sports, but nonetheless, a lot of money. Fox on the money there. Just calmly bringing the ball forward. It's another stray pass, though, and that's nice play down this right-hand side. Italy have players free on the far side. That's where the pass was aimed. Oh, crucial interception there by Grella from midfield. Milosevic comes, the flag's got up, but it was a very good punch anyway by Danny Milosevic. Certainly a lot of noise coming from the Italian bench. And it's Ambrosio who played the little ball over the top. He's handled everything that they've thrown at him, really, hasn't he? Uh, Danny Milosevic, he was probably third in line for a goalkeeping position behind the likes of Mark Bosnich who decided he didn't want to come to the Olympic Games because he'd been there before and wasn't going to take anybody else's position. Danny played for the Canberra Cosmos, resided in WA and he's loving every minute of this. Well, Milosevic, one of several characters in this Australian team that really epitomise Australian culture. Easy going guys, not too phased by big names and big opponents. Just go out there and do their job. Casey Weirman, Hayden Fox of a similar ilk. 
just guys who come out and play a game of football almost as though it's a stroll in the park on a Sunday afternoon. A little bit more spectators, perhaps. That's that easygoing nature sometimes works in your favour on the big occasion. Many feel that that's what gave Casey Weirman the night in midfield ahead of the likes of Jason Polina or Marco Bresciano. The fact that Weirman is such a, an easygoing guy doesn't have too much regard for reputations or figures of transfer fees and so on. past the half-hour mark. Now Blanco, I would say, will be reasonably pleased with the way his start, his side has started. Australia nil, Italy nil. And that's an Australian ball. Good work by Skoko. Alvaduca oh, went down under the challenge by Grandoni. a brilliant touch on by Commandini an early ball Fox was there for Australia now Zambrotta charging down good cross Fox again at the right place well, losing out in a dangerous position the dear blue shirts forward little back heel went straight to Lazaridis who just calmly cuts inside. He gives the ball away now. Australia just starting to struggle to keep the ball at times. A free kick against Pirlo. I did ask Marco Tardelli the other day, we'd be disappointed if the match finished in a draw given Italy's reputation and tradition. And he said not at all. He'd be quite happy with that particular result. Taken quickly, Milosevic, an easy take. Maduka getting his body in between the ball and the man. Now two on him very quickly, shielding it, holding it up. Just outnumbered there, very quick to close him down. Now the Italian side, losing out there was Grella. A little touch was by Skoko and he's been given a yellow card for I think it was just because it was intentional rather than the fact that it was nasty he missed the 1996 Olympics through injury Josip Skoko so let's just take a look here not much in it but certainly a foul Grotta against Emerton. Grilla coming over to help out. Chip through the centre. Fox coming out of the defence. Making no mistake, he's made a great start to the game, Hayden Fox. One of the questions, Wadey, coming into the game was how would the three overage players gel with the Olympic team? It's their first game together, of course. How do you think they're going so far? Look, I... I think the position that Raul Blanco's got Stan Lazaridis in is a very individual one. He doesn't really need all that sort of communication with the players. He's, he just gets the ball, he runs at players and he creates space for himself and he provides great crosses. So that for me has been no problem at all. And I think Stan, considering the rumours we'd heard about how his form was ordinary, has been quite good so far. Mark Viduka, well, what about Mark? He's, He's received absolutely everything to feet and he's shielded it. And very rarely gives the ball away. And I guess uh, the only other one and is Josip Skoko. A little bit disappointing early. I mean, it, really, that's where the Aussies are falling down. They haven't grabbed the midfield by the scruff of the neck. They haven't kept possession long enough to allow Mark Viduka or, more importantly, Michael Kasija to come into the game. Mind you, there's a hell of a lot of blue shirts between the midfield and, uh, and Michael Kasija. Well, an 
another question mark against the studs perhaps Milosevic just checking the equipment as he slipped over there now a little bit of promise perhaps here for Australia with Emerton on the gallop down the right hand side still in possession Emerton down the line for Viduka now back to the goalkeeper on his left foot he was very uncomfortable with it as well Abiati he was almost running around the ball to get the ball onto his right hand side the foul against Lazaridis taken quickly by Italy Skoko first to react and wins the ball for Australia. Josip Skoko charging through the centre. Viduka in Kasija with him. Still Skoko. Oh, now what will the referee decide here? It has to be a yellow. He wasn't the last man, really, so it couldn't be a red. I just wasn't sure which Italian defender it was at first. If it was Grandoni, it would be in a red. But it's in fact the sweeper, Marco Zanki. So, two out of the three defenders on yellows. Great run, though, wasn't it? I mean, he, he ran at the defenders with pace. The midfield, he'd already got past them. They were never going to catch Josip Skoko. And defenders running back at that speed have got very little of chance of making a good tackle. That's why he had to bring him down in the end. You know, just the Italian players all wearing black armbands in respect of the flooding problems back home in Italy and Calabria and several lives have been lost as the free kick is taken there's a loose ball and Labert was working his way into the back post and Fox was charging it as well well it's better from Australia because they're losing their way for 15 minutes or so but Viduka is trying to find his own way through the defence he too slipped over then better little phase of the game but danger here with Comandini so pacey but not as quick as Emerton or as tough either the two number sevens tangling there and the Aussie coming out on top what a great job Brett Emerton's doing he's taking on Zambrotto and and oh it was aimed for Viduka not a convincing clearance at the RT Gallas sorry lady no he's uh, he's taking on Zambrotto out wide and he's picking up the likes of Comandini in the middle as well, so he's getting through a power of work. He just needs to be able to do that work in the front third and try and get some quality crosses from that right-hand side for the likes of Mark Viduka to get on the end of. There's a player down for Italy. As we take a look, Viduka jumping there. It's the Italian number six I think Gennaro Gattuso he's not happy about something I think he's not happy about what he's being told by the trainer Gattuso one of four Milan players in this team doesn't get any bigger as clubs go than AC Milan Abiati, the goalkeeper, Gattuso, Comandini, and also Ambrosini in midfield. All first-team regulars as well, with the exception of Comandini, who's just joined the club this season. I think it was Gattuso during the week who said, we will not lie down. If the Australians want to make it tough, then we're going to stand there and fight them. So he's, uh, he's well into his fight now. He did have that look in his eye then too when he ran on the pitch as if to say, OK, if that's what it's all about, that's not a problem with me. Oh, look at this. Well, Fox caught out for a second there, but the ball ran through for Milosevic. And Everton's in space on the right-hand side. Just on five minutes to go until the half-time break here at the MCG. Still Australia nil, Italy nil. Viduka left it, now Lazaridis continues forward, couple waiting in the centre, Viduka at the far post, good cross, 
Well, those sorts of balls can just fall either nicely or not so nice, and it fell very well for the defensive side there. And Italy forward now with Gattuso, who's fouled. Well, it's a test for the Jamaican referee as well in this scenario when he's surrounded by three Italian players there. No doubt that was a foul, quite clearly by Vince Grella. Yeah, don't be fooled by any of that. That is international football. The Brazilians do it, the Argentinians do it. They'd rather commit a foul out there 35 yards out from goal than let him run that extra few yards to the 18-yard box and concede a free kick there. And referees are less confident of giving a yellow card anywhere in the middle of the park than they are at one end when it's, it's more crucial that play is allowed to flow. Eight of Australia's starting 11 have played for the Socceroos. Two of them involved in the big match here against Iran, Stan Lazaridis and Mark Maduka three years ago. Nice pass. Maduka, slick work by Australia. Skoko, nice ball as well. Everton, little touch off. Slick work by the Olly Roos. Maduka, just being patient. The cross comes in. Look at this. Kasija, was he nudged? Well, Lazaridis picks up a ball at the back post. And it's a good cross. Oh, brilliant save. I don't believe that. That was astonishing from Abiati. It looked a certain goal. Well, what a move. Lazaridis touched on at the front post, and how did he keep that out from Kasija? Well, now Australia are warming to the task as well. The Duke is sliding in. Everton slipping over. What a moment for the Oli Roos just before the break as well. take another look Paul Wade well that's the first time Michael Kasich has really been involved in the play and what a chance what a great save that is world-class football and the build-up to that uh, the, down the right hand side switching to the left hand side was probably the best passage of play the Australians have had but now they can't get too carried away because look at this PLO's free kick Fox taking it off the hands of his own goalkeeper. Now Weirman saying he's not happy with that challenge. But it's Vince Grella talking to Ambrosotti. Grella, one of three players in the Australian squad based in Italy. Plays for Ternana in the second division. Grella, when Sydney was announced as the host of the 2000 Olympic Games was just a 13-year-old lad playing for Springvale here in Melbourne. Little did he realise what a stage he'd be on. Just a minute to go until the half-time break. Yeah. Very much coming back into this match in the latter stages of the half. An extra minute will be played for the half-time break. It's a sharp turn from Comandini. And a nice interception from Colosimo. Viduca touching it off. Scocco, the fancy his chances to run at the defence here. Colosimo continues his run forward. Good cross in. Maduka got a touch, the goalkeeper punches. And once again, down the left-hand side, has looked the most promising for Australia. And now they've won it back here. Great work. 
still Australia forward. Well, no foul. There's a Reedy's coming in there and has fouled. Now, the Italian bench coming across to have a word to Lazaridis as we take a look at the flick on at the near post by Viduca. Abiyati, well, some may say he could have caught that, but he wasn't taking any chances. It's good to see, though, the crosses are going in there. Every time they go down that left and right-hand side, they're getting their crosses in now. That's what Mark Viduca likes. He likes the ball to feet sometimes, but when you get the ball out wide, just put it in the 18-yard box, and more often than not, he'll be there. Well, that's half time here at the MCG. Well, Rob Blanco said to me the other day that a team cannot play with fear and that his team was going to have a go at the Italian side, and they've certainly done that in the first 45 minutes. With Abiati, the outstanding save from the Italian goalkeeper after a header from Casiglia, Australia's best chance in the first 45 minutes. At half time, it's Australia nil, Italy nil. Thank you, Paul. And I'd be a little bit surprised if. Rob Blanco had made any adjustments to his team. He would have had a couple of things to say, perhaps about tightening things up in midfield. But certainly now, the stage is set for a rousing second-half performance by the Australian Olympic team. There was a train of thought before the game, Paul Wade, that it's vital that Australia do score first with the real tradition of the Italian team to hang on to a lead it was vital for in the eyes of many people that the Oli Roos must get the first goal of the game and they almost did that in the first half yeah they were tremendous weren't they those early three kicks oh look at this and Zambrotto rather danger for Australia well it will be hacked away Pretty nervous start for the Oli Roos. And now Fox clears the ball, and it's actually a goal kick. Sorry, you were saying, Paul, we'll just, just take a look at this first from Zambrotta. Pulling it back, coming off an Australian player, and Emerton clearing the ball away. There are two danger periods here for the Australian team, and that's in the first five or ten minutes of this half and the last ten, because you can be guaranteed these boys playing in this Serie A in... Italy they can last 90 minutes and longer so they're gonna have to be on their toes right to the end and it is a big ground and it is wet you can see the boys are having to work hard to keep their feet so there will be a few boys tiring They've just got to concentrate Everton's cross has just stifled somewhat it's an Australian throw out by sheer weight of numbers there Casey Wheelan but it's another Australian ball Edmonton will take it Maduka and Casidia waiting in the centre a lot of blue shirts around them well, that was an original throw it was just an awful lot of Wheelan Edmonton got to the ball though and did very well great work by Edmonton Maduka stumbles Fox that's calm and a great first time ball as well to Lazaridis. Labert, deep cross, aimed for Viduka. Well, that's what pressure does for you. Viduka coming in there. It was an awkward ball for the Italian number 15, Bruno Cirillo. He's just given the nod today in that left central defending position corner for Australia good ball so close there to an opening goal the goalkeeper missed it completely well it was a brilliant corner whipped in Baduka was homing in on it and just off his thigh well he had a split second to react to that one well they could so easily go in and this one went over the bar oh. 
free kick against Stan Lazaridis. And Gattuso and he having a good little battle. Now look at this danger here. Well, pushing against Nicola Ventola. Well, you get the feeling, Paul, that there is a goal in this game. There's been opportunities at both ends in the first half, and the second half has continued in that vein. Yeah, it might be un an untidy one, but certainly there's, there's a goal in this game. Mark Viduka, how unlucky. Again, Michael Kasija involved in a little flick on at the near post. Viduka just keeping his opponent facing the wrong way. Now, there was screams from the far side of the MCG for a corner there. throw by Lazaridis. Grella picks up the ball and gives it away in a dangerous position to Andrea Pirlo of all people. He runs through the centre, plenty of yellow shirts streaming back and one of them was Emerton. Well he covered about 60 metres to get back there just on the off chance that he could help his defence out and he just got a toe in. That's great work by the captain. I remember when he was first given the job as a captain it wasn't a permanent job. Raul Blanco said you're going to have to earn it and work hard and prove to me that you can captain this team. And there were certain doubts there throughout the National Soccer League at times as to whether his form was good enough. But he certainly answered the critics and he's carrying on with it tonight. Oh, that's great work in midfield by Australia. Corella forward and foul. Well... Grella going straight to Peronio, letting him know he wasn't happy with that, which is probably not necessary. Oh, look at this. There's a little bit going on now. All the players are involved. As we take a look at the replay, it was an intentional foul by Peronio, no doubt about that. I think that's what upset Vince Grella. Matuzo, that look in the eyes again. Of the fact that he needs business here tonight, but it's a free kick to Australia. No cards yet shown by the Jamaican referee, Mr. Brenda Gast. Now, have Australia done enough work with their own set pieces to come up with something here? About 23, 24 metres out from the goal. Everyone back behind the ball for Italy. Duca over the ball as well. Oh, he's leaving it now. Skoko and Fox are there. Which makes me think that perhaps kind of set piece. Skoko takes it. Oh, just over the bar. And it was dipping, but just wasn't quite dipping hard enough. You take a look from the camera behind the goal. on the chase the defender doesn't know where he is but applause ringing around the MCG for that a little interchange there whipped in the Duke is at the back post just too far good idea though by women an early cross Australia certainly had the better of this half without a doubt the seven minutes or so that we've had it's another free kick for the Oli Roos coming from the Australian bench. You get the feeling, Paul, that Australia are coming out here to win this match. They believe they can take the three points here and knock off the European champions. I don't doubt in my mind, just from the, the couple of passages of play we've had in this first ten minutes, that the boys in the, the gold shirts seriously believe or have, have 
put to rest all those doubts they had about themselves and how much lack of preparation time they had and how good the Italians were. It's, uh, it's, it's a joy to see yeah. one-touch football played from one end of the ground to the other like they're playing at the moment. Well, that's another foul. This time it's a little bit closer. The Duca this time went straight for the ball and said, I wouldn't mind having have a crack at this time. And he is a great free kick taker. A little touch on from Viduca. And a foot up by Baronio on Casey Weirman. He's done a good job in midfield tonight. The danger for Australia is, as the match goes on and they push more and more for the victory, is swift counter-attack through the likes of Pirlo and Comandini. I'm sure Raul Blanco has made it very clear that that is the real strength of this Italian side. But now, we've got Skoko not far away from the Duca as the wall is marched back. Box over the ball as well. Oh, took it himself. Oh, Ebiati did well to hang on to it because closing in very quickly was Stevie Labert who has scored for the full Socceroo team and Ebiati did well to hang on to it that's exactly what the Italians were practicing in their final training session yesterday defensive free kicks defensive play their formation at the back they obviously knew something about this Australian side that maybe a lot of other people didn't know that they are a good football team Rossini for Italy. It's a nice ball inside to Comandini. That's a clever ball to Pirlo. Danger here for Australia. Oh, cross! Milosevic, great save. Oh, brilliant work from the Aussie keeper. On par with Abiati's save in the first half. But Italy opened up the Oli Roo defence there. Take a look at this. Great football. Comandini involved. A good pass across, Milosevic exposed, and he used his body well. There's still 35 minutes remaining. There's been so much happening in this second half already. The game's opened up a bit. The Duca. Olympic football does have a reputation for being more open and more free scoring perhaps than the World Cup. 1996 there was an average of three goals a game. In one Olympic Games tournament the average was five goals a game. Australia would settle for just one here tonight. Weller. Emerton. Takes the shot. Good positive play again by Australia. Procedure jumping, Skoko, Emerton again, might have another go, he slipped off! Abiati, once again, that Emerton shot was arrowing for that top left-hand corner, take a look at this! Unbelievable save there by Abiati. Well, corner. Australia can smell a goal. Deep corner, Abiati in trouble. Just over the back post. Well, this was the earlier move when Italy themselves had a great chance. Beautiful ball across by Comandini and Milosevic at the right place. And a substitution now for Italy. What a second half we've had. And it's Barodio who is making way. It's the number 17 coming on. Cristiano Zanetti. Didn't see too much of the very highly rated Baronio tonight. Yeah, I've been critical of the Australian midfield and how they've not got hold of the ball, but. I must admit, Ambrosini and 
And his partner, who's just left the park, has, uh, haven't done too much either. We've hardly seen them, have we? No. Cristiano Zanetti plays for Roma. He was injured for much of last season. Got a little point to prove. It's a nice layoff to Pirlo. Oh, foul there. And Steve Labour, I think it was. Well, this is Andrea Pirlo territory, without a doubt. A free kick here. Interesting to see if Australia pull a player back on the goal line this time. It was a tactic that worked in the first half. What will they do here? This time they're all staying square. Perhaps they feel Pirlo's too far out. We'll see. Takes the shot. Oh, hit the bar. Not too far out at all. Well, Milosevic ended up in the back of the net. And he could afford to smile because the ball didn't. Well, you can see why they put that extra defender there, can't you? That is just superb. That's that's Diego Maradona quality free kick. He's beaten the jumping defenders. They knew they had to jump to try and narrow that angle, and he still beat them. Duca touching it on. Everton will chase this. Well, he got there first as well when he had absolutely no right to. Just outpaced Chirillo there. Well, I was wondering which midfielder would start getting himself forward. I, I thought it might have been Josip Skoko, but Brett Emerton, the skipper, has taken the responsibility. Maybe Raul Blanco said to him at half-time, somebody has got to go and support those two strikers. And so far, Brett Emerton has put his hand up. Half an hour remaining here at the MCG. No goals, but tons of action for this record crowd. Azaridis. A little fortunate there. The crowd don't think so. I think it was a certain foul. Well, up, wants to get on with the game quickly. Fox does exactly that. Into Baduka, into the area. Baduka on the turn. That's a corner. Well, Baduka's such a smart player. The ball ran away from him there. It's so tempting just to have a nibble and perhaps foul the defender and waste the opportunity but he's patient he just shielded or just put a bit of pressure on the defender and won the corner Skoko curls it Abiati flaps a little bit plenty of yellow shirts in there they need a lucky bounce and instead it was a foul against one of the Oli Roos this is the second time that Olympic football has been here in Melbourne back in 1956 the Australian side beat Japan 2-0 in their first game there Nick Millen and Lockwood the scores before going about 4-2 to India in the second game 2-0 up on that occasion but look at this Italy Ambrosini takes it straight at Milosevic After the hour mark, it's Australia nil, Italy nil. They know they're in a football match, these Italians. As soon as Danny Milosevic got hold of that ball, there were five blue shirts back in defence in a straight line, making sure that they were the last people. It's a great ball. Kasija, sharp layup from him. Everton early cross. Kasija's waiting. He got a touch on there as well. There's an Australian player down. The ball will be sportingly thrown out. It's a big night for Michael Casija, who's made his name for South Melbourne. It's Skoko, who's down. Well, that was a cross. Casija all off his back, really. Yeah, he's used to these big atmospheres. Uh, having played in Brazil in, for South Melbourne in the World Club Championships, he's been, well, had two very good chances, or at least a hand in Australia's finest chances. 
Well, this is a worrying sight for Australian fans. Josip Skoko, one of three overage players in this Australian team, going off for treatment. Options on the bench, perhaps, for Raul Blanco if he does have to go off. He doesn't look good. Perhaps uh, Marco Bresciano, Jason Colina. He had Nick Rizzo warming up before Josip Skoko went down, so whether he'll change his mind now will be interesting to see. Marco just shows Bresciano. you the yeah, just shows you the positive frame of mind that Raul Blanco's in warming Nick Rizzo up, the striker. Feels he can win this game. Wants to go out there and see if he can. Yeah, I guess uh, an indication would be if he was trying to hang on to what he's got. It's if Lucas Neal came on, who's a, a hard-working, defensive-orientated yeah. player. But either Rizzo or Bresciano looks like the option, which says to me that Raul Blanco is going for the three points. Well, let's hope that Skoko is back on the park before long. Australia temporarily down to ten men. Not the time to take any chances as Colosimo goes long. It's Colosimo again. Skoko is moving behind the goal, but he's still not showing any signs of coming on. That's a nice ball from Simon Colosimo to Lazaridis. Just showed too much of the ball there to Gattuso. And Skoko, well, he has to come back to the halfway line before he can come back on. No, the referee has led him on now. Just in the centre of the screen there, Joseph Skoko. for racing Genk in Belgium but born and bred in Geelong just on 20 minutes gone in the second half here we're still waiting for the first goal of the game Italy with a tradition of starting major tournaments slowly as we see that Bresciano is about to come on Edwin Sanchez there, Australia's assistant coach and he will be the player to make way That's Casey Weirman it is in fact Casey Weirman coming off your thoughts, Paul Wade? Look, I need, I, I really do believe something has to happen in the midfield. And with the scoreline the way it is, nil all, they have to get a goal and a little bit more push from midfield. You've got the likes of Vinny Grella now sitting in midfield. Josip Skoko, he's sitting in the middle of the midfield. You need somebody willing to take a chance. And Marco Bresciano, if he goes or he sits, allows somebody else to go or sit. It's got, something's got to happen and I think it must as Raul Blanco is suggesting, happened from the middle of the park. Well, in a warm-up game last week, Marco Bresciano was absolutely brilliant against Kuwait, and many felt a little bit lucky not to be in the starting lineup. So he's got his chance here now. Another Australian player who's based in Italy. He plays for Empoli in the Italian second division. No hesitation there. And Colosimo now has some time. Gattuso, Pirlo, strong challenge, Gattuso again. And Pirlo is down, and he'll need some treatment after that challenge. Oh, that's a nice play, if Paducah can use the body, which he could, but he just couldn't keep the ball. Another good layup, another first time ball. Again, great work from the Oli Roos. Really sharp football as Emerton comes forward. And Italy also showing their composure at the back. The crowd are sure that the ball has gone out. The assistant referee kept playing on. Fox is struggling. Comandini. Roberto Colosimo was timing his tackle to absolute perfection. 
Well, I read in a player profile that Simon Colosimo listed timing of tackles as one of his strengths. Didn't mention first touch or skill or vision, which he's noted for. And I guess he's just proved me wrong in the fact that I didn't think that was one of his strengths, although he is very good at it. That was a tremendous tackle. Didn't have to be have a crunch to it, but boy, it was perfectly timed. Fialo. Colosimo again at the right place. And remember, just in July, just over a year ago, Simon Colosimo was carried off Stadium Australia needing a knee reconstruction after a tackle by Andy Cole of Manchester United. There were question marks about whether he'd play again, let alone whether he would be ready in time for the Olympics. So it is tremendous to see him out there playing. Fox always backs himself with the ball at his feet. But the man free on the left-hand side in Lazaridis. Too many options on for Stan Lazaridi, so he comes inside. Fox again. That's confidence for you. Labert. Interesting to note, Michael Kasija now, every time the Australians lose the ball, the number 17 who's closing the ball down now drops deeper and deeper into midfield and they leave Mark Viduka up on his own. So whether that's a, a tactical move by, a conscious move by Raul Blanco to make sure they do not concede a goal, having played so well. Skoko has been getting some more treatment on that thigh and the knee and the face gone up for offside Zambrotta well the 35 million dollar man Gianluca Zambrotta has been kept pretty quiet in this match he played for the senior Italian team against Hungary in the World Cup qualifying game in the two-all draw just over a week ago and the number 12 is coming on Massimo now Jota. There's a read, he's down the line, nice ball. The Duca, two on him so quickly. And an Australian corner, and I have to say, Australia have looked dangerous from these corners. Skoko immediately goes over to take it. Well, big Mark Baduka, the broader shoulders in Australian football, carrying the weight here in terms of goal-scoring responsibilities. Well, the referee's blown the whistle. There's an Italian player absolutely out for the count, and it's a yellow card for Hayden Fox. And there's a little bit going on here, and it's important that the referee gets control of the scuffle as Fox makes his way back to the back. So he doesn't know what all the fuss is about, but it's typically Hayden. And every time the stretcher bearers come onto the MCG, the roar goes up. I keep thinking it's a streaker or something, but it's the, the men with the fluorescent yellow tops. Just under 20 minutes to go here at the MCG. Hayden Fox, a yellow card. Joseph Skoko got one in the first half. Two all in terms of cards. Two for Italy as well. Landoni and Zanchi. Still not sure which Italian player it is down. I suspect it might be Grandoni. You know, it's one of the toughest jobs at the Olympic Games, the job that Raul Blanco has to do. Here's what happened. We're looking for the red-headed Hayden Fox coming into your picture now. There he is with the red hair. Just runs into Grandoni, catches him on the side of the head, but 
Why he got a yellow card for that, I am not quite sure. In fact, it's the sweeper, Marco Zanki, who's getting the ice on the head. It's never a pleasant feeling. It's just as uh, Marco Tardelli was about to make a substitution as well. We'll see if he changes things around a bit. Zanki wants to come back on. The referee hasn't seen him yet. turn by Scocco through the centre was Kasija slightly better pass there and Kasija would have been in that's a nice pass Pirlo well a slip there by Emerton but he was up so quick Emerton just too many legs for the Italians and he's been brought down no no foul according to the referee this time there was though. The really international signal for a change by Marco Tardelli. He's not happy. In typical Italian fashion, the arms go up and he lets his feelings be known to everybody. I guess he has to do something. He refused to include any of the overage players. He figured it was a reward for all the hard work that these under-23s had put in in qualifiers. The likes of Roberto Baggio wanted to come to Australia, and he said no. So he's expecting a, a lot better performance. He might not say it at press conferences, but I'm sure he's expecting a lot more from a team that are the European under-21 champions. Now there's a chance for that change to take place and it's Nicola Ventola who's making way for Massimo Maggiotta a man who has around 30 relatives here in Australia so he has a real affinity with the country even though I don't think he's ever been here before Ventola has had a pretty quiet game Yellow turns inside Wow. Well, the foul was on Zambrotta. And the yellow card has been given there. Well, I don't think it was even a touch. I think he may have even slipped. No, I think he did grab his shirt, but he certainly didn't pull him down. And that's what the crowd were going berserk at. All right, and the danger now is for Australia with Pirlo over this ball. This is a real problem. Bresciano goes into the referee's book with a yellow card. But there's more pressing problems. Well, what a bonus there. That was the worst free kick Pirlo's taken in probably in the last three years. Well, Paul Wade, we said before the game a draw would be a good result for Australia. Does Raul Blanco make a change to try and secure a draw or does he keep going all the way like he has done? No, I think he keep it the same way at the moment. I wouldn't change anything just yet. Only having had 32 minutes of this second half, still another good 15 minutes to go. And I think it's showing your cards too early. Having said that, there is a player stripping himself off. How long it's going to be before he comes on? Probably only a matter of seconds to keep my big mouth shut. Raul Blanco maybe is so confident that he can get a result here. He's decided that now's as good a time as any. Oh, another great run by Lazaridis at the back post. There's a slip there. Bresciano on the ball. It's a corner. Well, it looks like Lucas Neal is the player who could be coming on for Australia position is a long way away from the pitch and there it is confirmation perhaps a little unlucky not to make the starting 11 in some people's eyes Lucas Neal but Skoko will take the corner oh it's been mishit 
Or if we're in yellow shirts, pressing hard. Oh, another slip there. Players still not quite. Go. Oh, look at this. Oh, Colosimo, he had to make that tackle because Pirlo was free all on his own on this right-hand side. And now Lazzaridi is a chance again. Good early cross for Duca. Couldn't get under the ball. An easy take for Abiati. change will take place before the free kick can be taken and Josip Skoko has succumbed to the injury and Lucas Neal will take his place <laughs> Lucas Neal plays his football in England with Millwall overseas for a number of years now this should be an easy one for Milosevic Maduka still waiting for one quality opening to be given to him oh that's a nice pass now he's got room on this right hand side Kasij is coming in Well, how many times have we seen that tonight? Kasija getting on the end of a quality cross with a glancing header. And here's another. Great ball by Viduka. Fantastic touch. Abiati saved. Well, it may have missed anyway, but another quality move, Wadey. He's worked hard off this ball. He hasn't been involved in much of the build-up, as I'm sure he'd like to have been, but finishing four chances. Corner. Well, Hayden Fox put his head down. Lazzaridi still there. Good cross! Abiati. Well, he's had a great game, the Italian keeper. And it Italy now have some players forward. Fox just lumbering back through the centre. Australia needs some players back. Or they need someone to win the ball like that. Now Fox is back at the heart of the defence, look at that, he brought it down on the laces, that's risky, look at this, Italy, Pirlo, surely, he's missed it, it hasn't gone in, off the goal line, astonishing, well the Italians are absolutely furious. I think the linesman was actually running back to the halfway line as if it was a goal, in fact, I'm still not sure whether it's been given or not. The Italians are celebrating. The goal has been given. And that ball was over the line. Italy have taken the lead. Pirlo had so much time. Look at this. He almost missed it off the post. And it spun across the goal line. That is heartbreaking for Australia. Well... The linesman on the far side did not flag straight away that the ball had crossed the line. Well, Hayden Fox will have nightmares for a long time over that. One nil to Italy. Andrea Pirlo, the scorer. Less than ten minutes on the clock here. The Duca. With Italy a goal up and 10 minutes remaining. It is an almighty task now for Australia. And imagine what's going through all those yellow shirts' minds now. We've got to get one back. There'll be players pushing forward. But the likes of Simon Colosimo and Steve Labour at the back have got to keep their shape. 1-0 is no disgrace against an Italian team. 2-0, it just might leave the door open to one of the other two teams in this group and it could come down to goal difference as to say who goes through to the next round Colosimo wins it in the air Grella, Australia still have time to salvage something from this game 
but it's not a great deal of time. By my count, there's around seven minutes left on the clock, plus some time added on. And the RT immediately trying to use up as much of it as he can. Tardelli has that gleam in his eye. He's won the World Cup as a player back in 1982 and he even scored in the World Cup final. So that's a man who's been there and done everything there is to do in world football. A brilliant control by Casilla. Great touch. Bresciano now. And Brosini facing the wrong way. No need for Bresciano to do anything silly. Great play by him to bring Pirlo in. Nice play by Italy. Zambrotta, Pirlo. Grandoni, the first time ball to Gattuso. A oh, great tackle. Lazaridis. Casija touching it off. Viduca. Casija's free. Viduca just couldn't release the ball quickly enough. But for an instant there, Michael Casidia was free in the centre. Well, it's broken nicely for Australia again. Casidia's on the right-hand side, the flag's up. The pass wasn't the best anyway. Now Blanco is making another change. Nick Rizzo is coming on for Gr Vince Grella. He has to do it. Rizzo, very much an out-and-out -out attacking player. Grella, very much an out-and-out -out defensive midfielder. So, the midfield is Rizzo, Bresciano. In the centre. Back heel by Fox. Italy with Comandini in the centre. That's a corner. It's interesting. Now the Italians have got their noses in front. They pushed an extra man forward. Mark the Otters up there. Comandini and uh, Piello. Three players in a straight line up front. It means that those gold shirts have got to come back and mark them, which means that gives them more of an impetus or less of an impetus to go forward. On the volley, a hopeful attempt there by Zambrotta. Massini just hooks it over his head. Well, around four minutes remaining here at the MCG. Australia nil, Italy one. Emerton, Bresciano, touched on by Casija. Space on the left for. Rizzo in his first touch, slipping over. Lazaridis has gone ahead of him. Rizzo straight at the heart of the defence. Good positive play from Nicky Rizzo. That's smart play, and that is a great ball. Labour kept his eye on it all the way as Pirlo looks tired. And goes to ground. Players free on the left. Lazaridis involved just losing his way there now Italy on the counter-attack with Comandini he's got plenty left in the tank still Comandini well he was tugged down it was outside the area but only just by Lucas Neal tangling there with Comandini Australia must keep their concentration up here. They still have time to come up with an equaliser, but a second goal would kill the game. Pirlo over the ball, not many Italians forward. Oh! It's hard to say just how close it was, but Argiotta had the thumbs up. 
Play to the near post. Not far away at all. Rossimo again on that post. Decision oh, and he's going to be given a yellow card. Is he for a bit of petulance there? He is. Well, Steve Blayman should know better than that. It's, uh, that is just silly stuff, and that could cost him a little bit later on. Two yellow cards in this competition, and you'll miss out on a game. And he'll afford to get the Australian team in that sort of position. He's vital to their defence. That's well held up by Gattuso, and that's another foul. Well, Australia, in, the, in their anxiety to win the ball and get the ball up to the other end, are just committing a few fouls. Gattuso... Dived on the ball. Just over a minute remaining. Australia a goal down in their opening match at the MCG of the Olympic Football Tournament. Pirlo over the ball. Fox wins the header. just hacked up the park by Ambrosini. Rajota uh, will just try and hold it up as long as he possibly can. Try for the corner. Instead, he's lost possession. It's an Australian throw. free kick. Now we're into time added on here. All the Australian bench is up. Coaching staff anyway. Yelling instructions. Every player forward virtually except one. Colosimo the only one on the halfway line. That's two deep. Abiati an easy one. Well it's a foul by Fox. Well the free kick really was too close to the goalkeeper anyway laboured it was rather who was charging in well, he was never going to stop and I don't think he actually touched the goalkeeper in the end to take the free kick. Italy, understandably. Pirlo in space on the left-hand side. As Italy try to keep the ball a little bit longer. No need to give it away. So trying to press hard. Colosimo jumping with Comandini. Milosevic comes. Straight up the centre. Leduca chasing. It's an Australian ball. There's still time for something. Uzzo leaves it for Lazaridis. And turns his man, that's a foul. Well, everyone will be up again for this one. It's taken quickly. Rizzo, oh, the referee's called him back. Good idea by Lazaridis and Rizzo. This time the delivery must be perfect. where hours and hours of practice help. Whipped into the near post, an easy one for the defence. Must stay on side, touched on, Viduka foxes there, Viduka can't get any room to swing at the ball. Colosimo's the last man. There 
is the full-time whistle. Once again, heartache for Australia at the MCG. Another sparkling performance by an Australian football team and another result that doesn't go in their favour. A second-half goal by Andrea Pirlo after a howler of a mistake, really, by Hayden Fox at the back when he just gifted the ball to the strikers. It was an easy tap-in for Pirlo. And Italy, the masters of getting the result that's required, have beaten Australia here. So three points for the Italians in the group, but Raul Blanco's side will take heart in the quality of their football at times, which was absolutely outstanding. And if not for Abiati, the Italian keeper, Australia would surely have found the back of the net. But the full-time score here at the MCG is Australia nil, Italy one. Get ready for a special Olympic treat. Take a trip back to the 1956 Melbourne Games. See recently uncovered official footage in this superb premiere special. Tonight, 10 o'clock, the Friendly Games on 7. Celebrating the 75th anniversary, limited edition Futura. The most value-packed Falcon in 75 years. All listening? Okay. This Friday, Olympic show and tell. we've got from tents to barbecues we've got the lot if you're headed for adventure in the great outdoors we have everything you need and probably more with everyday prices you won't beat we've got clothes accessories and things for your feet anything for outdoors fashion or pleasure it's a one-stop shop with gear for your leisure <laughs> tents clothes barbecues we've got the lot raise outdoors come see what we've got don't forget, with Telstra's Easy Saver Plus, you can enjoy our lowest international call rates ever, starting at just 21 cents a minute. So don't wait another minute to join. As the excitement builds, Australia's biggest names come together with the world's best athletes. It's going to be amazing. Who is lighting the flame, Dawn? Thursday, 8.30. The winner is Sydney. A preview to the Olympics on 7. dual silver medalist in Atlanta, a silver medalist in Barcelona and again hoping for big things in the dressage event on his horse Bonfire. Netherlands of course often referred to as Holland, won 19 medals in Atlanta and that was equaling their best ever haul. They've had some great sports men and women haven't they? Fanny Blankers Kern, four gold medals in 1948. And they have a wonderful athlete competing here too, Inga de Bruin. Les Antilles Néerlandaises. Netherlands Antilles. Self-governing Dutch territory. 
the Caribbean Islands, Netherlands Antilles, first competed in 1952. La Nouvelle Zélande. New Zealand. Into New Zealand, led by Blythe Tate, a gold medalist in Atlanta on his horse, Ready Teddy. He'll be hoping to emulate that feat in the three-day equestrian. Big team from New Zealand this year. Their best result was back in 1988 with 13 medals. One of their best ever results against Australia, though, was in 1976 when they beat Australia in the men's hockey final. And that was one of the great Olympic upsets. Distance running, of course, Bruce has been very good to them. We think of runners like John Walker, Peter Snell, yep. and Murray Halberg, and Dick Quacks, and Rod Dixon. And the torch, incidentally, visited New Zealand before flying from Auckland to Ayers Rock. Le Nicaragua. Nicaragua. A sport of shooting. Gets underway tomorrow, Walter Martinez, an expert in the 10-metre air rifle, is the flag bearer. Nice to see them back in the Olympic family. The Niger. Niger. Niger is a country located in the interior of northern Africa. First competed in 1964, won its only medal in 1972. That was in boxing. The Nigeria. Nigeria. Nigeria's led out by Sunday Bato, who's at his third Olympics, 31-year-old, 400-meter runner. I wonder if Gloria Lozi is out there tonight, who lost her loved one, Igina Sanugo, who wasn't in the team. She was brought from Yokohama. Gal Divas last year and she will we believe be competing here she's going to run in his memory and I think that's a wonderful thing just a young girl they will be so strong in many of the athletic events La Norway. Norway big team 100 exactly Vajan Rodal who won the 800 meters gold medal in Atlanta leads them out a very strong in women's handball to the world champions. Women's football, they're particularly strong in. Even though they were beaten by the United States in the opening round. Knut Holman is their brilliant canoeist. Second in 92 behind Clint Robinson and then turned the tables in 96. And Trini Hattestad is their magnificent uh, javelin thrower and one of the favourites. Oman. Oman. So from the might of Norway to Oman, Mohamed Al Malki, their 400 metre runner from the past is carrying the flag. Just eight competitors here. They have a 14 year old boy competing for them, the youngest male in Sydney. Le Pakistan. Pakistan. Led by Pakistan skipper and hockey goalkeeper. Ahmed Alam. Ahmed trying to bring home Pakistan's first hockey medal, gold medal that is, since 1984. Had some enormous tussles with a number of countries, but perhaps none more so than with their arch rival India in hockey over the years. And I wonder if that's going to happen again. They've sent a team of 43. Palau. Palau. Another first timer in Sydney, Palau. Oceania group of islands in the North Pacific Ocean and they've had a real battle too to get here La Palestine. Palestine another one of the small teams in fact a team of just two Palestine to Panama. Eileen Copperopper, a 19-year-old freestyle swimmer specialising in the 50 metre and 100 metres, leading out her team, competing in her first Olympics. 
They just sent just five athletes to Barcelona. La a bigger squad here. Papua New Guinea. And more than that.